What's going on, family? It's your brother Lawrence here with another episode of Watch God Work. In every episode, we get the distinct pleasure and honor to speak to a brother sister that's doing exceptional work in every field of human endeavor. And they share their God stories, the ways in which God has been at work in their life and the ways in which God has been at work through their work. And today, it is no different. I have my sister, our sister, your sister, Miss Charlotte A. Betts. What's going on, sis? Lawrence, I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm well, but what does good mean? Because everybody says good. What does good mean to you? Oh, you know, I'm great. I woke up feeling good today, ready to do this interview with you, ready to chat. I'm feeling great, ready. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm certainly excited. You know what's actually, Lawrence, uh, anytime I come around, I call people wordsmiths. <laughs> wordsmiths are a whole other energy because I think in order to be amazing wordsmith, you have to be one who is a reader, who reads who reads extensively, who observes, who takes in a lot of information, but also who's observant processes and then communicates. And I think that the ability to communicate is one of the most powerful communication, <laughs> powerful tools and gifts of all time. I think the masterful communicator of God is the best communicator of all time. And he put it through yeah. words and not just experiences, yeah. but through words. And so when I hear about your story and the work that you're doing through Pint Size Faith, having this amazing brand, we were talking about the linens. I was just like, shout out on the shirt. We're going we gonna to do another line in a shirt. <laughs> but we're going to do another line. I'm not saying I'm infecting inventory. I'm just, just going to put that seed out there. But, All right. that, you know, that is, but, but even in doing this work and creating a brand and putting something out there that in and of itself is an out of home. We call it in that, and people call it an advertising work. It's a walking advertising, it's a walking affirmation. I see this, I'm able to see something and remind me of God, but also your work and the, the work and how much excellence you've already experienced in your work uh, and where that's taking you from the Chick-fil-A, Target, all, your work has been everywhere. And so I, I can't do your story justice. And so I'm gonna lead off how we lead off. Who is Miss Charlotte A. Betts? You know, <laughs> it's always so odd for me to talk about myself because, you know, I, I'd rather have people present me, but I'm, I'm gonna do the best that I can. So who am <laughs> I? I'm, uh, I don't really like to identify myself as like with titles just because I don't feel like it does me justice, but uh, I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a mom. Um, I'm African. I was raised in Canada, born in Africa, Togo. I'm a storyteller, a mompreneur, entrepreneur, um, and I'm a child of God, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's who I am. And uh, I've been um, writing for a little over 14 years, um, five years professionally. And I consider myself just to be a storyteller. Everything I do has to be a story of some sort, but not purposefully, like not on purpose, it just so happens. Mm. Um, and so that's pretty much who I am in a nutshell, storyteller, mom, wife, you know, that's it. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I love these, I love this conversation. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I've been fortunate, we've been fortunate to be able to, is to speak to um, some amazing mothers. And I think we've become in this culture very matter of fact, I think in some sense, our culture, the world, the times that we live in don't value mothers enough, even with all of the commercial spend that goes towards it. But I'm saying this to say, there's a superpower, I say, in mothering, in, in writing, in doing the things that you're doing. When did you realize, at least from the writing storytelling perspective, that you had some sort of, I'm gonna say superpower, like, this is a little different. Like, just tell me about that Genesis moment. When did that come through? What did it look like? Uh, you know, I, I think I have to go way back and um, to my childhood. And it's so funny because I used to be so stressed with my father. <laughs> my father is African. He grew up in, well, he was raised in Togo. And uh, I remember the summers, uh, when summer break would come, mm -hmm. he would not allow me to go play outside like other kids. So he was very strict just with me. I'm not sure why he was just like, he wasn't like that with my brothers, but with me, it was completely different. And I would have to sit at home through summer breaks and read books. He made me read books and write um, kind of like a, um, I don't know how you call that in English, a um, like a book report, I guess, right? Of the book I had already. 
outfit. But now that I think about it, it actually was grooming me to be the person that I am today. You know what I mean? <laughs> the curse a was the blessing. Teller. What they meant for evil. <laughs> right. No, seriously. What they meant for evil has actually turned, God turned it around. Seriously. Um, but, you know, I credit my, my storytelling capa uh, capabilities and my ability to write and, you know, just tell stories to that. Mm. Um, and also, he actually also worked very late. At times, I would have to ask him some questions or, you know, if I had something to ask him for the following day, I would write it out because mm. by the time my dad came home, he, I would sleep and he would leave very early. You know what I mean? Mm. And so I would write it out and then leave it on a table and he would read it and then re reply that way. It was really crazy. It's just, you know, it's crazy how everything that happens to us is actually building us up for what's meant for us to be, you know? <laughs> and so um, that's really how my uh, writing started. And I, um, I remember being the go-to in high school. Like everybody would just come to me and be like, hey, Charlotte, you know, can you uh, write this out for me or can you do this? And I really never understood why, but now I, I know it was something that just came easy to me. You know, sometimes you just don't realize what you have because it's just second nature to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then growing up and getting older, I'm like, oh, wait a second. Like, this is something that I do so naturally. It must be my gift. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> storytelling my, my, must be my gift. And um, from there on, writing uh, for J.C. Penny, writing out concepts and scripts and a lot of behind the scenes um, work. Mm -hmm has landed me where I am today. And um, that's essentially how Pine Size Fate came about too, because I wanted to share a story through apparel. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just really, really intentional about creating pieces that speak to people. Mm -hmm. And so if you're wearing this mustard seed fate, people are gonna be like, well, what does that mean? If they don't know what it means, it gives you an, an opportunity to explain what it is and to share your fate with them too. So mm -hmm. just being very intentional about things. I love this. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there even before getting into uh, Pine Science Faith in, in depth. And then, you know, I, I, like I said, the matter of fact, right, where people are writing. But, th th but there's levels, right? You know, um, you know, one of which is kind of like you, we call people like, you know, you get your shower Grammy. You know, everybody can sing and catch their note in the shower. Right. But like, really, when you get outside into the real world, you know, you realize, You're like, uh, you know, I, I ain't I ain't really hitting them, them trills, them runs the way they are, you know. Um, but similarly, to your point, it was cultivated, obviously, in your community education. You've seen people come to you for these things. When was there like a step function or like a shift professionally where you're like, this is not just like, oh, this is nice, like for local community and my friends, like I can actually do it professionally, you know, because, again, you, we say this matter of fact to write and be paid for your ability to write, whether journalism, oh, it, it, it's a very daunting, faith-requiring thing. So what was that shift to, okay, talking to my African dad, I'm gonna go make, uh, make a living writing. Right. <laughs> so, right. So tell me about that dynamic. <laughs> So the first, when it first happened for me, it was when I moved to Chicago from mm. Ottawa, Ontario, and I moved here in 2007, and I started a blog. I started a blog just because, no specific reason. I think that, I wanna, I'm going to get back to that in a second, but I want to talk about how we, everything does not have to be monetized. Mm -hmm. You start with your creativity, and literally, your gift will make room for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I started, I did it because I love writing. I just love writing any type of like writing I do. You know what I mean? And so um, when I moved to Chicago, I started a blog called Char's Real Talk, where I was just talking about anything and everything because I was bored. OK, I had no friends here. I had just moved. My husband worked a full time job. I wasn't working. So I was here doing Char's Real Talk. And it was kind of like a. Um, <laughs> Basically, it had no real point, to be honest. I was just writing, writing. Then that uh, went from Shars Will Talk to Styles by Shar because I started really getting into style, personal style, fashion, and things like that. And then I had a child, and it just kept evolving from Shars Will Talk to Styles by Shar to Milk and Honey. And Milk and Honey was a motherhood blog basically talking about how it's okay to be a mom and still be cool. You know what I mean? Because I think a lot of people <laughs> that, yep. It's cool to be a mom, you know what yeah. I mean? And so it was a motherhood journey, but also I wanted to keep up with the people back home who didn't have access to me here, you know, um, to see my daughter grow up and things like that. And when I started that blog, that's when it um, I got approached by Chicago Parent Magazine. 
They had read my blog. They've been following me. I didn't know. I didn't know they were following me, but they were following my writing. And then they actually hired me as a columnist wow. for them. And that's when it started going higher and higher and higher. And they did some work for Jay Jill. They called me in. I was pregnant at the time with my second child. It just kept going on and up and up and up. And then, you know, I, I got to where I am today and I'm still evolving, you know, but now that I'm sharing my story, I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you look at this. Go, no, bro, I've been doing this for a minute. <laughs> yeah. th th this is providential. You know, come a long way and you don't always realize how far you've come. So thank you. <laughs> I, mean, like, I think people just like the mirror behind you, you need people to put mirrors to you, right? To your story. And I, I think mm -hmm. this is part of even the power of like, you know, seeing God at work because you, you were just doing, because typically, right, you hear from a business perspective, it's kind of like you identify a problem. And often it's very, sometimes it's, it's you run into it just because you're going through life. You're living life. Something happens. You're like, mm, or I wish this was happening. And then you build something because you're like, all right, there's other people like me. I can solve a problem. But even for you, this genuine idea to say, well, in some sense, you're solving for, hey, there's a distance between family I want to write. Also, I'm a bit bored. I need an outlet. So it was solving a problem, but it was just genuine. But the beauty of it is that you did not so much pursue this per se. You pursued mm -hmm. the practice of it. I need to write this blog. But someone saw that. And if you're not creating some sort of value, then someone wouldn't have saw it, seen it and said, hey, could you open up and write for us um, in that? This is this is this this is this is great. But now you're kind of talking like 2007, you came. I'm kind of taking kind of the. I have a timeline in my head, right? But when you talk about even the style, you're like, you know, mom's just saying, yeah, out here frumpy, we cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, there's a nice yeah. style. <laughs> you know yeah. There's, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, 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 there's something important in that. But for you, it is, uh, let me say this. Did you ever feel like this tension or this push to say, I need to consolidate in one, so I'm writing, I can't think about this style thing? Or how was your view to just embrace all these different parts of you and different interests in, and feel peace about it and not feel like you had to kind of zero in or I don't got time? Like, because even if you just said, I'm just gonna do the mom thing, that's it, everybody would understand because that's an all encompassing work, right? Yeah, how did you manage these interests and style, mom? I'm writing and not feel any tension to try to consolidate into one thing. Because yeah, I was, I was just being myself, mm. you know what I mean? And things that I liked before I had a child, you know, and it, it's just me, mm. you know? So, and I think that it's hard to, I think we come into problems when we try to do something that is outside of who you really are. Mm. Um, before I had my children, I, I like to dress nice, you know, and I like music and I like, fashion i like personal style and i like writing and so i just combine all the things that i like and somehow god worked it out for me you know what i mean because i was representing myself mm. individual me you know mm. and i just being authentic so basically that's 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 what i credit it to you know and i think that when you're really true to who you are opportunities are going to come your way mm. and just oh. and i think that's um i think that this is the service that we do we make we we try to be something that we're not. Mm. And because of that, it's kind of hard. You, you can be very, you can stay stagnant in where you are just because you're not being who you are. I hope that makes sense. No, 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 no. I, I was going to lift that up. It, it, you, you, you're, 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 you're speaking. I'm not going to say necessarily you're preaching. You're, you're speaking, preaching, um, because I think there are a couple things in the play. One of which is that I think not enough people see their interests their natural leanings, desires as something that is divine at all. Like that actually was part of it. The fearful, wonderful making of you was was imprinted mm -hmm. into the path that um, God would have for you for your life. I think some, it's, sometimes people don't have enough faith to believe that or they just never thought that those two things going hand in hand because it seems a bit too frou-frou and or, or morphous. Like, well, I came up with this. Did you really? Right. That's one. Two. I think uh, many people encounter what I call like the utility wall, which is I have all these interests, but I, I got bills. And so a lot of time people think like these are where dreams go to die, where I desire these things, but like I, I don't I can't afford to dream. I can't afford to do these things and these hobbies, these interests. And some part of it is just the fallenness of the life in the world. But some part of that sometimes it makes us prematurely ignore or uh, uh let's say suppress these things so i think that you're giving like a real reward and so uh, even with this i think this is so powerful 
it takes faith to think like that, right? And so let's talk about your, your, your faith journey, your genesis. Where was the genesis of you just kind of being introduced to God and starting to see God and have go on a journey with God? What was the genesis of your relationship with God? Okay. <laughs> You have time. <laughs> no, no, take it back. No, take it, take it. We talking stories here, uh, so I was like, take it back. And just we we tying it together. Yeah, the day I I boarded a plane to move here, that's when I started faith, my faith journey. Really started without really knowing. Um, when I met my husband, and I was like, okay, so where are we gonna live? And he's like, Chicago, because that's where I'm from. I'm like, mm, okay, you know. So I mean, I had nothing really going on in Ottawa, Ontario, anyway. So I was like, sure. <laughs> you said so, that. You said that, Charlotte. I ain't say it. You said it. I like, like, <laughs> Ottawa, you know, small town. But anyway, <laughs> look, I don't want people to come. I know, that's what right I'm saying. Now, I was clearing was myself. <laughs> I was clearing myself from the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're right. You're, it wasn't, half, it was not, nothing great going on when I was there. Okay. <laughs> but it's great now. And so I left that small town and then just, that was such a leap of faith for me because I had never lived outside of my house. Mm. I had never lived with anybody. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, just being an African girl, that just doesn't flow back then. <laughs> with, back that's, then. that's euphemistically now put. Now it does, so for me it wasn't happening. You know what I mean? Like, um, so then when I moved here and I had no friends, I had nothing, I had no job. It was just very, very hard. But that was the first leap of faith. But looking back, um, I can see that God's hand was on me and he actually needed to take me out of that environment. Not that it wasn't bad, not that it was bad, but it was small. Mm. And he had bigger dreams for me. Do you know how like you have to literally change your environment in order to grow sometimes mm. or always actually? And so that's where my faith journey started. Mm. Then I joined a church here in 2008. Um, and it's just been growth after growth, after growth, after growth, but just really learning to have faith in God. And then when he told me to, I don't know if I shared this with you, but when he told me to leave my job in 2018 mm -hmm. with Apple, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. We won't get to I that, but children. I'm glad you introduced it. So let's, <laughs> let's talk, let's talk about it. Um, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to leave. Um, uh, but you know, the way God speaks to me, he, he'll be very he'll send me messages through people. I think that's just how he operates. Sometimes like he'll talk through people and he was like, it's time to leave. It's time to leave. I remember meeting a girl who I met my friend for lunch and out of nowhere, she says, well, you know, I write, I write resignation letters, you know, I was like, what? I don't, I don't, what? <laughs> I didn't ask you this, you yeah. know, she's like, yeah, just in case you want to leave uh, your, your current position. But it was constantly, it was one thing after another, after another. And I knew that God was trying to, um, get my attention basically. Mm -hmm. And so finally I ended up leaving, but that was also a test of my faith because I had to believe that he would provide for me every step of the way. And, and it's in that, I think it's, it's in that situation that it really, my faith really grew. Mm. Um, you know, the way he built up my faith is by constantly taking, taking leaps of faith and just not giving me exactly what's going to happen next, but just one step at a time. You know what I mean? And then I just took the step and obedience was a radical obedience. Actually, it was the name of the game for me. And uh, I think God just deals with us in a way that he knows how to deal with us. Because mm -hmm. I can be very well, no, I was very um, controlling in my like, I need to do this, I need to do that. I need, you know what I mean? Everybody's looking at the back God's mirror. Like, like... So... <laughs> God's like, no, it's not going to happen. Not this way. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I got to ask, I got to ask you I because, am. you know, I think you, I love you kind of talk about the crescendo of the journey of faith and how God has strengthened your faith at these like junctures of like, all right, Ottawa, Chicago. All right. And obviously there were many in between that, right? Of like, I don't have friends. I didn't start this thing. All right, great. All right, great. I have this amazing job and I'm going to leave it. Great. That makes sense. Right? Like, so in your mind, there's these leaps, but was there, are you saying that there was no introduction or you had no semblance of God early before? Or was it kind of like, nah, actually like I didn't believe in God or God wasn't really a thing or wasn't oh. real beforehand. What was like, what was like the intro? And then are you saying that just accelerated your relationship with God? when you left Ottawa? Well, well, no, there was, there was an intro, obviously, uh, like my, my mom was very, very, um, Christian. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's the way she, to again, it was just like, <laughs> very, very Christian. Yeah. Um, and it's so odd because just like the writing and now see how God's hand was on my life the whole time, mm -hmm. just because 
even with just with the right, my mom would always wake me up to go to church. Never my brothers, you know, it was just always me. Like, let's go. And I used to lie to her. I'd be like, mom, I have to go to work. You know, this Sunday morning, I have to work. She's like, are you sure? Because I used to work at the mall back then. And she's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I need to go to work. And she's like, okay. Then she would leave by herself and then she'd come back and I'd still be home. You know, like, it's like, well, I thought you had to work. And then I'm like, no, I, I, I just didn't want to go to church. But then I got convicted some way, somehow, you know, I would always get convicted and then I would start going to. So the seed was planted there from like very, I think my, once my relationship really started to like, I think I was like four, 15, 16, 17 going up. Yeah. Mm. And that's when it started, but I never really knew. Mm. Lawrence, you got me like, wait a second. <laughs> Um, no, so this is, um, that's where, that's where it started. Really. This is, I I love these. I love this stories. And and I I always, I'll, what I'm always curious about, even in that, because what you're speaking about is just like, I'll create this introduction. These seeds being planted. You didn't really know, like many of us don't, we don't really know like how all these things are working together for that relationship. But I was initially about like, what was it about God, right? I think in how it accelerated, was it the fact that, wow, um, that there's someone who's, or like, like what made it good news to you? Was it the fact that, you know what? Like, like I have a path and like my life matters because it seems like things accelerate when you've taken these leaps of faith. Like, what was it about God? Cause I think that's a common question for people it's like, is it God because you're just supposed to? And like, it's just great to talk to somebody. Like what for you, because everybody approaches God differently. What for you made God say like, you're necessary for my life. Like, I need you. Like, if I don't have you, this is important. What was that about him? Look, um, looking back at how far he's brought me. Mm. I think the one, well, no, I think the one thing that happened to me was in 2011, actually, that's when the pivotal, it, that's when it took place for me. In 2011, when I, I lost a child six months into my pregnancy. Mm. That's what, that was the pivotal moment for me. Mm. And, um, and I was told that I could not have children. And so then I, I was devastated and I was like, what is life? You know, like, I'm here. You moved me here from Ottawa to Chicago. I'm now married and I can't have children. Like, what, what's going on, Lord? Mm-hmm. And then um, in July, I was pregnant. April, July, after being told that I couldn't have children. So that was April, May, June, less than four months. I was pregnant again. And so that's that's when it happened for me, but I was scared the whole time my pregnancy. And I remember going to the doctors and five months, four months into my pregnancy and her telling me, um, Oh, you know, I don't know that you're going to carry this through, through term, probably the same thing that's going to happen, happen to you, Mm -hmm. happen before it's going to happen to this pregnancy. And that's the day I decided I, I'll never forget that day. I went to, to my bedroom. We come back home, my husband and I, and I told my husband, I said, wait for me. I'm going to have a chat with the Lord. Don't come in this room. I'm going to talk to God. Mm. And I closed the door and I said to him, I said, God, I have, to this day, I don't know that I prayed a prayer like that. I prayed it once. And I said, God, I said, it is written in Exodus 26 that no women shall be buried in this land. That's what I said to him. I said, I'm not bringing this back to you. I'm leaving it here. And that's it. And I never prayed that prayer again. And sure, this is not to say that I wasn't fearful throughout the whole pregnancy, but I, I never doubted his word. There's a difference between fear and doubt. Mm. You can fear, but you shouldn't doubt. Mm. There's a difference. I think I think the church has it kind of like confused, <laughs> you know, there is. There's going to be, yeah, no fear, no fear, no fear, but doubt actually approves every piece of faith that you may have. You know what I'm saying? So that was a pivotal. And then when I carried that pregnancy to term and then got pregnant again at 35, I was like, look, that's a pivotal <laughs> moment for me. <laughs> you know? I was like, no, right? no, one can, can, no one can say anything about the Lord. Like he is true to his word. You know, faith, mustard seed faith. And Everything I create because is because of that. My mind is bone talking to you because I'm just thinking about how far God has brought me. You know what I mean? Like it's it's 
It's insane. These, these are like these goosebump, I, I said, like moments of like, you know, when God scares you um, in, in, in the, the reality of it. And, like, and, and, I, and I think this is why this is this is so this is so beautiful, because I think everyone hungers for God to be real. You know, um, I, I think in some sense, whether uh, people seek God or they seek other things, I think there's a sense that there's some greater knowledge beyond me. And because I want some certainty for my life, um, I'm going to seek that. I think in our hearts, we all seek that. And then when there's some sort of um, encounter with something beyond you that you're just like, this cannot be me, um, it blows, it turns your world upside down. But, uh, you know, I think that's, his, that's the goal, right? Uh, the world is already upside down. He's turning it right side up. Um, and so I, I, mm -hmm. I um, this this is so powerful and so so now you i'm seeing now these moments and you're seeing god show up and so i think for someone hearing this story about you being at apple you getting nice iphones and stuff discounted and stuff people feel some type of way you know they're listening to this they're like oh no you know like, it's just like right, i'm like you want right. to connect right so you're in an apple right. you just, <laughs> like, literally when i left my people were mad yeah, you, you, like, yeah. you had some you you had some enemies right like you left right <laughs> you left apple what you mean but i think right. on the back end of hearing that story I think it makes much more sense to say if, wow, if he showed up like this, what, what little, is, what is this um, that I, I could leave? And so now you leave Apple, right? And you're like, okay, God, what? And so what now was the shift? Was it now at this stage, like, all right, God, is it now you want me to fully give into this, this work? You know, I've been in this style. I've been kind of building this thing up. Like what, what was now the transition from that moment? There, it took a minute because I was kind of like a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm just imagining what's the conversation with your husband when you like, yo, dog, God told me to tell me that he like, what? Look, first of all, praise God for this man because I don't know, like, I, you know, God puts you with the right people because he was like, uh, he said, okay. That's all he said. He said, okay. And I was like, really? I was like, I think the Lord went to him before me mm -hmm. because there's no way, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we were two, uh, two, uh, two income household to one and we had a child in private school. Like, <laughs> but anyway, um, it worked out and it took months for me to, to adjust because I was so used to like being having something come in constantly, you know, every, I was getting paid, I could do what I want. And that changed very, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> um, so it took me a minute to try to figure out, I kind of sat still just to make sure that I was going in the right direction because I didn't want to get ahead of myself. And let me tell you that there were days of, I'm going to go get a job. <laughs> Every other the month. The way you say that, like, you're, you're, you're run that back, yo, please bad. run that back, please. <laughs> Look, I was like, this, this, this must be the devil because God does not, he said he came that I may have life and life more abundantly and this is not it, you know what I mean? And so that, that like, but every time I would want to do that, he would send something out my way mm -hmm. to confirm that I was in the right place at the right time. And uh, what's so funny to me is that working at Apple actually groomed me to be a better storyteller mm. and to be uh, a better um, provide customer service to my customers mm. in a way that I, I didn't know before Apple. Mm. And if there's something, if it wasn't for God, I'd probably, and I, I hate to say this, so I'd probably still be at Apple, but not, not in a capacity of like working, but just because I liked it so much that I didn't know that God was actually grooming me for my next. And I think we have to be very careful now to stay where God is moving us for the next. Mm. You know, we, we, because we get so comfortable sometimes in our position and God is trying to get you out of there, but also don't move prematurely. Like there's a lot of people who will tell you to quit your job, quit your job, quit your job. But are you ready? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't make sure that God is leading you at all times, whether it's to stay in your position or to move from a position. For me, I knew that God was leading me because he would like, you know, <laughs> I would like go to sleep and he, he'd send me scriptures. Like, you know, the Holy Spirit would be like, oh, well, you know, you can't put new wine into old wine skins. I'm like, what, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you know, like things like that, you know? Yeah. And so um, I knew that it was time for me to move, but I, I would encourage people not to move prematurely because you are there for a specific reason. And, you know, just to go back to Apple, 
you see how they do their commercials. You see how they storytell. It's very impactful, but very quick. And that's one of the gifts that I, or one of the things that I learned from Apple there too, you know, that I'm able to apply in my day-to-day storytelling and work with other brands as well. So, you know, the, I don't even know if I answered no, your no, question. No, 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 no. You, <laughs> no, this is, I, I, I love the, I love the, it's like a jazz riff, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's so rich in what you're sharing. I, I think when people hear storytelling, I, I think people more and more now understand storytelling being universal, that in everything that you're doing, you're telling stories, that actually the most effective communication package medium is story, right? And I, I think people are getting that now across the board. But I think there are, there's like, I'm telling stories for the story's sake versus I am telling a story to communicate something that exists, right? You know, a brand, a this or that. Um, how did you find your place within storytelling at this stage? So, so you know, you could say, you know what, I want to just com- primarily and only focus on the brand side, or you know what, I'm storyteller. There's a story in me about my experience. I think sometimes when I hear about storytelling, people hear about storytelling, it seems so broad and vast. How did you know that I need to stay here and at this stage of my journey that God is having me now want to tell stories through through the through my fashion through this work like just just how are you talking to God about where you are in storytelling? Uh, for me, uh, you know, it's it has to create it has to be impactful. Mm-hmm. It goes b- beyond. You have to. I have to be impactful. Like, uh, how can I explain? I don't want to just tell a story for the sake of telling a story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There has to be. Any- People have to be able, you have to be able to relate, but you also have to be creative with it. And so that's where God is leading me. You know what I mean? For me, um, for instance, we had a Mother's Day campaign that we posted on Pine Size Fate about how um, motherhood takes grace and mercy, Mm -hmm. which is a play on word on what we carry. That's one of our best selling t-shirts, right? Grace and mercy shirt. But also it relates to my personal story. And I I see how a lot of other mothers are impacted by by just pregnancy and infertility and things like that, you know? And and the Lord will lead me to the right song and things like that just to be able to be impactful. And a 15 second video has so much impact because of the story behind it. So it goes, it goes more, it's beyond, for me, the way God is using my storytelling, storytelling skills is to be impactful and to carry a message that, like, elicit emotion. Mm. Makes mm. sense? Yes, it, it, it does. I, I, I just, uh, this is, hmm. there's this dynamic. I have this plant, um, you know, I love, I love plants. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things I feel, I love discipline things. And I say, so shout out to the plant. So I had this Monstera Delicioso and I have like three, like, gigantic ones <laughs> and one is like extra gigantic where it's just like this is like scary <laughs> like something needs, we, we ain't in we ain't in brazil somewhere. Right. i gotta figure this out right so um but i remember in that uh, in a moment there's a part of me which is just like you know i heard that you could divide this plant like i've done with other plants and give it to people and i remember this thing had gotten so big and there's some selfish part of me which is kind of like i don't want to cut this thing i just want this thing to be nice for myself but then i saw parts of it start to die because it was too big for the area. It's too big for the pot. It was just like, if you don't give this thing away, if you don't cut this thing down, it's going to die. And I think there's this tension that I think people have of this, their gifts, keeping it to themselves and the things that they think that mm-hmm. if I give stuff away, it's going to be less than, and it's just like, no, no, no. If you give your time or like my life, your life is actually to help people to actually have an impact. And so whether you're talking about your work now, it's like so genuine, it's come through your story that actually you're finding life and actually helping people have an impact. I think everybody wants to matter in that way. And this is why I think your story is like so, so powerful because I think no matter what you're doing, it wasn't for you. (laughs) It was not for you. Your life is not for you. Your life is not just to pile it all up and you and your family sit in the corner and look how good we've done. At some point, something's gonna, something in you will die. Right, because you were made for something greater, and and and, and this is what I appreciate. I, I would love to give a little bit more, uh, give more a little more time just as we close around pint size faith. Because again, one of those things you talk about in a very matter of fact way. But I'm like, yo, these shirts are dope. These shirts are dope. Like, these things, <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, like I'm like your sister, right. matter of fact. Like all of y'all, I would say like it's the moms. Y'all talk so matter of fact. I'm like, how are you doing this, right? Like, <laughs> um, but but you know, you talked about that 50 second, the story. 
where do you see it emerging now? Like now as you look forward as brothers and sisters are coming alongside to support and like buy, what's the next horizon of Pint Size Faith? What stories are you looking to tell a little bit more clearly through some of the new apparel and things that are coming down the line? What, what stories are you trying to tell now? Um, innovation, mm. uh, a story of innovation. And the reason why I say that is because I think it's great that we started with basics and stuff and we're still going to do that. Um, but God is a God of innovation and creativity, mm. right? And so it's good to start somewhere, but what else is God have is saying? What else is God, what, what else is God have for us? You know what I mean? And that's what we're trying to do with this, with what we're, where we're going. We're still going to have, um, you know, our t-shirts, but we're also expecting to have, you know, apparel for the whole family. Um, and again, when we started, it was just for children. That's all we had. And so it's it, it, evolution, basically. Um, and innovation is where we're trying to go right now with, uh, with, with Pine Size Faith. And um, we're introducing other things that I'm not going to talk about. All right, right all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Y'all, we, 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 got, we, got, we got a teaser. There. We got a teaser of a trade secret, but we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to sit right. back. <laughs> but you know essentially we're just looking to continue to provide uh faith-based faith-driven apparel and accessories for uh the whole family and uh that's still really our our focus mm. you know I, I love this i i absolutely absolutely love this i mean a word i always share is that you're still making clothes for children uh, god's children yes and i and i'm, I'm thankful uh that uh, you are doing this and expanding it so more of God's children can be able to experience this and obviously uh, benefit from the messages that are there. How can people find you? How can people find you? How can people connect? Um, well, on social media, I have we have two accounts. So I have a Pine Size Faith account, obviously, and then I have my own personal account where I need to get back on there a little more often. But um, Charlotte A. Bet a Betts. <laughs> And uh, I do have a website, charlotteabets.com and uh, pintesizefaith.com or at pintesizefaith.com. Uh, sorry, at pintesizefaith on uh, social media, which is Facebook, Twitter, and um, Instagram. And yeah, just shoot, shoot me an email. Y'all. Connect with me. Yo, yo, Charlotte, yo, you, you, you are the people. This is, um, I think on behalf of those who are watching and who will see, I just, I thank you. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for listening when God has called you. I thank you for going out on faith, not sure where the land he will show you. I, I thank you for being open and vulnerable about your story of loss as a prelude to blessing. Um, thank you for sharing the prayer you prayed. Thank you for sharing the gifts he's given you, the stories he's given you and allowing us to wear it like armor. And so much, mm. I think on, be uh, on behalf of the brothers and sisters who see this and are just encouraged by your story, God bless you. Thank you. We are supporting you in all that you do. And we thank you for sharing your story. We love you, sis. Lawrence, I, I don't even know how we cross that. Well, I mean, God knows, but I'm just so thankful for what you're doing. Thank you so much for having me um, and enabling me to uh, share my story and just what you're doing for, for the kingdom. It's, it's incredible. And so thank you and just keep going, keep moving. I'm excited for you and what's to come. Big things, I'm sure. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. Looking forward to the black shirt version of what you got. All right. <laughs> Speak to you soon. I got you. I got you. All right. Love you. Take care, sis. Bye-bye.